Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still dreaming of that maiden voyage that I was supposed to take months ago. And what that means is it's time for me to change the starter on my outboard motor that's gonna be powering this boat. As the story goes, the last time I tried to start that motor, uh, it gave me a bunch of clicking, so the motor would not turn over. My diagnosis for this problem is that either the starter or the solenoid went out, likely uh, both. But here's the deal. I'm gonna be replacing both the starter and the solenoid on my 25 horsepower Johnson two-stroke motor. Uh, for those of you guys that saw the episode of how I got this motor on this boat in the first place, uh, it's, it's a good episode to check out. We basically dragged it. We towed it in the water when it was like 90 to 95% submerged. So the solenoid and the starter are both full. So they probably got completely overwhelmed with the salt water and just gave up. That's how electronics and salt water go. You shouldn't be mixing the two together, but um, I'm stupid and that's what I did. Also, it was a necessity. There was no other way for me at the time to get this motor on this boat. And here I am dealing with the repercussions of my actions. Let's check out the old components. This is, this is the old starter. Uh, you can see it's beautiful, beautiful condition guys. Obviously rust salt water is, or not salt water, salt crystals are falling off everywhere. Uh, when I actually took this off the boat, there was, uh, there was water coming out. So when I turned it upside down, there was, there was water coming out. You could see right there, all the buildup on the starter. So you could imagine a scenario where this thing uh, quit working on me. That, that's, that's how that goes. And here we have the old solenoid. So the solenoid doesn't look nearly as bad as the starter, but still not in pristine condition. Everything is coated with the salt crystals and a buildup of rust. Again, you can imagine why this is probably not working. Here's the new starter. Look at it. Look at it. Guys, look at it. It's so new. It's like brand, brand spanking new out of the box. I think I got this on eBay. Uh, I'm gonna try to post a link to this. Uh, I believe I paid somewhere in the range of 45 to $65 for, for this replacement starter. Uh, the key difference in this one though is if you're replacing any starter, uh, please take note of the tooth count. So this is a nine tooth count. I believe the other ones were 12. So if you just look at a 25 horsepower Johnson Evinrude uh, replacement starters, the most common one that come up is a 12 tooth model. I had to do some digging in order to find the nine tooth model. If I had got the wrong tooth uh, configuration, that, that would have been bad for my flywheel and I would have to send this thing back and uh, do the walk of shame back to my computer to order the proper one in the first place. So it's a good thing to pay attention to the small details in life so that you don't order the wrong tooth starter for your Johnson outboard motor. So keep, keep that in mind. Here's the new solenoid. Again, these are identical parts to what I got off the boat. I believe I paid 20 bucks, 20, 25 bucks, something like this. Uh, again, I'll post the link for this. And uh, this is a direct replacement for the solenoid that I have. Don't you, don't you guys love that new solenoid smell in the morning? Oh, so good, so good. There are many configurations in which the starter and the solenoid both attach to the outboard motor. In my case, it was this bracket. So I did not opt to go for a new bracket because this one is in good condition. So what I have to do now is attach the starter here. There are two screws that come brand new with the new starter that attach here. And then the solenoid goes into this place. And the trick is, again, this is uh, very important. If you guys take something apart, take pictures because it's been, I believe, a couple of months since I took that apart and my memory is quite foggy of where exactly all the wires go. So I am oh so thankful that I took some pictures before I started this project because I'd be here for uh, more than a hot minute. I'd be here for a while trying to figure out where the, the wires go, uh, probably looking for wiring diagrams online. So, so thankful that I was able to take a couple pictures just to know how the wiring diagram is for that, that starter and solenoid setup. Now, first thing to keep in mind is how the starter is gonna go into this. So there's two screws, so obviously there's only two uh, possible uh, positions for this bracket. So it can either go like this or like this. If we take a look at the old starter, so you can see that the solenoid is gonna sit right here. Uh, therefore, the proper position for this attachment point for the wire is away from the bracket. 
So therefore, what I'm gonna do first is there are two screws that were put here to make sure that this does not come apart during shipping. So we're gonna take those out uh, and then remove the screws that attach it to the bracket. Okay, this is a little bit insane on how hard they tighten one of the screws down because this is just supposed to prevent it from coming apart during shipping. Uh, I'm having a really hard time on doing the screw. I know from previous experience that if I keep going with my driver, it's actually gonna snap the bit because these things have enough torque to snap uh, these torque bits. Uh, I've done many of those in the past. So I gotta find a way to, to get this thing off because it's it's a cylinder obviously, so it's pretty hard to, to keep in place while you are trying to undo this. I, no idea, no idea. Why the hell would you guys do this? Um, don't tighten just mounting screws so hard from the factory. It doesn't make any sense. Using good old ingenuity. So you make do with what you got. Here's what I have. This is where the uh, electrical wire gets attached. And I have a hole here. So in order to stabilize this while I move the screw, I'm gonna put this in here. And that hopefully should give me enough stable stabilization to to take this, this stupid, stupid screw off. Let's give this a try. Put this socket on. Go ahead and deep socket 11 millimeters. So let's just come on. There we go. Ooh, man, you're serious. That was just straight up nutty. Now that we have that taken apart, again, remove the two screws and then insert the starter into its bracket. Uh, line up where the screw should mount. Insert set screws once again back into their position. And we got it. Insert second one. We got that as well. And then, now we, we don't have it. Now we got it. And then, in the name of saving time, let's grab our 11 millimeter. And drive this thing where it belongs. There we go. That is a lot better than what it used to be. They call that good old elbow grease. And I'm really thinking about getting the Milwaukee things that you don't have to use the brush. Instead, you could just press a button. I'm, I'm coming for you, those tools. Those tools, I want those tools. But now, uh, let's put that screw back in and reinstall this wire onto the brand new starter. And hopefully, we stretch everything. Great if these threads were the same. Please don't tell me these are different threads. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, LOL, not LOL. Not really a big deal, but if we take a look over here, this portion is threaded. That's where the wire was attached previously. And the new starter does not have threads. There's no threads there. Not a big deal. Uh, I don't really think we need a solid mounting point just to attach this wire. This is not a long wire um, and it's a good enough gauge where it's not going to be moving a lot. So we're just going to get rid of this of this bracket um, and install it, install it without this bracket. I could potentially just loosen up one of the mounting screws that I had to mount the starter to the bracket and then just use that for, for this. Maybe, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Let me try it. That's what I'm going to do. So a little bit different attachment point, but again, not a big deal, improvise on the fly. And for this portion, I'm now gonna attach the hot lead to the hot lead on the starter. This thing is now ready to mount the solenoid. So the solenoid just sits like this, and there is a semicircular bracket that holds it in place. Uh, again, it can rotate, so just find a good position where it's gonna sit relatively parallel to the actual mounting bracket. And now we're just gonna tighten it down. Uh, always, guys, there's always gonna be issues when you're working on projects. So the new solenoid 
even with the bracket tightened down is still still rotating um, not good so again let's improvise on the fly what I am going to do is I have some of this gorilla tape that is supposed to be for waterproofing you don't have to take off the, the portion that allows it to stick so I'm gonna match the size to the bracket I'm gonna cut a strip of it open and then I'm just gonna without making it sticky insert it between the solenoid and the bracket and I think that's gonna give me enough room to at least stabilize this the solenoid it actually worked really really well so now the solenoid is tight inside of the bracket here is what it looks like you can see the small portions of the gorilla tape underneath and that probably will not leave any residue but it's enough torque um, placed on this solenoid where it, it's not going to go anywhere which is exactly what i wanted again guys improvise on the fly life is not always going to be perfect especially on boats and this is one of the things I love most about these projects is your creativity, your ingenuity goes a long way because there are so many times you just don't have what you need and uh, you gotta use the good old, good old noggin to get things done. This is good. We can now attach the wire that goes from the starter to the solenoid. So again, this is what gives the power. So when you turn the key on, right, power comes in from the main line up into this connection and then threads it through to this connection that's why it's a solenoid and allows the starter to rotate the other cool thing is i really like when companies give you new hardware to install all the wires it's really nice not all starters come with hardware um, but this one does which is fantastic thank you to the starter people let's install the compression ring and the new bolt with the wire on the starter only. Okay, once again, guys, we have a case of LOL, not LOL. Gotta, gotta use the noggin to get things done. So unfortunately, uh, the wire that came onto this is not big enough. So uh, the hole that's supposed to mount to the solenoid is not big enough. Unless the wires were reversed, there is a good chance that they were reversed. So let me, let me take it off, let me reverse the wire and then see if this hole is actually bigger than this hole, um, allowing me to properly mount it to the solenoid. I'm just a man. I'm just a man and learning, learning good. Uh, how to do this yeah i had the wires reversed so again there you go pay attention to the small things because they are important if you reverse the wiring one is larger than the other and therefore i should have mounted this in the first place uh, by paying attention it's also possible um, that that the other starter had a smaller uh smaller hole somewhere but either way uh, this works without having to drill any of the terminals so there we go that's what we have we have this the starter positive lead going to the solenoid, positive lead. This next part, I'm, I'm really, really, really not looking forward to, but I uh, I had to go inside my dinghy and then to the motor because there is a ground cable that the terminal snapped off. So I have to detach the cable from the motor, which is a, a, a ground cable, and then redo the terminals on that cable. Let me show you guys what that looks like. Right there and there is just the motor. And if we zoom in real close, so that wire right there, and you can see the lead is broken. So I have to detach that, that's a uh, ground point, and then redo that terminal and that wire so that we can have proper grounding to the solenoid and the starter. Uh, this is not a game I enjoy playing at all. At all. Guys, this sucks. It always makes me nervous. Today's a, a decent day for this though. It's not too wavy, so let's just do it. Let's just get this done. So this wire right here, this broken terminal, uh, we are gonna cut this and hopefully, hopefully have enough room left over to, 
to have the new terminal. So let's see if we can strip this. Bam. I really like, I really like these guys. Um, the game here is not to drop anything in the water. That, that's where, that's where this game gets tricky is everything has to be in pockets. You have to be very diligent about everything you do. And let's see if we brought the right guy. If he will fit inside. Again, everything is very challenging here because things are moving. And it looks like this terminal will work. I think we got lucky. Let's just double check if the wires are in there before before I go ahead and crank this guy. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna take off a little bit more because I think I think there's more room more room to be had and uh, the rib this dinghy that I have definitely makes things more safer because I'm so much more stable than I was in my previous dinghy problem is uh, that prop is a sharp point so I have to stay away from anything that is sharp so any waves that come by again gotta be so careful because if that prop hits the inflatable portion of this dinghy yeah, that's uh, it's game over. This thing is it's gonna start deflating, so gotta be real careful. Real careful. Always looking out for waves. Let's crimp this guy. Let's crimp this guy. Crimp this guy. I said rotate. Please rotate. And this is where we don't have a lot of room. Okay, good so we got that cable on now it's just a matter of bringing the starter mechanism in here hopefully hopefully having uh, enough room to clear it because the last time I actually took the solenoid off first and then took out the, uh, the bracket assembly but let's go back on deck grab everything come back and and see if we can put this thing together it's always 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 makes me nervous because uh, I have everything one one pocket and two pockets, so my rear pockets are full of hardware. Uh, I'm just analyzing how to get this done efficiently. And again, holding on with one hand, there's the starter mechanism. And I'm not wearing gloves like I usually am because I want as much manual dexterity as I can muster. And let's see if we can get this thing slid in properly. So there it is on the first attachment point and what's not letting us what's keeping us Does, something's something's not letting us this is where it's gonna get tricky this is where I think the last time having the starter solenoid out helped a lot if I remember properly there's this part right here which I don't want to jam my finger it's going yes 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 okay good 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 everything is in everything is in wow wow that's uh, that that's exciting that really is exciting okay now we have all these wires right so we got to figure out where all the wires go this is the wire I repaired so I'm gonna remove this and again make sure I don't drop anything put this in here okay we got that then, if my memory serves me correctly after looking at my diagram, this black wire comes around and also mounts to here. Okay, so we got we got that. Uh, or wait a second, no, no. Yes, yes. Okay, that's how it goes. Uh, and then the trick is so this this wire comes comes here put this on there and try to organize this whole jumbled mess and put this bolt back on no 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 come on be good be good go on just 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 grab that's all I need you to do is just grab Okay, once it grabs, uh, we are safe. Okay, 
So this wire will come along here. Let's see if we have a little bit more room to rotate this than we do. Okay, so now we're just gonna we're just gonna put all the wires back where they need to go. This little wire comes comes around here and goes on this portion of the solenoid. Uh, this comes apart. And again, make sure not to drop everything, comes back on here. Clear that wire out of the way. We actually don't want to tighten this down 100% yet because the wire that comes off the battery also goes on this screw. So we're just gonna leave this like this for now. Good, okay, so we got that, that, that. And now we start pulling wires out of my back pocket. And this is tricky because I can't see them, so I'm just going off of feel to find which bolt I think is the correct one. So I think this one goes here. Let's just go like that. And there's another one right there. Uh, and this is where it got tricky with the solenoid. That's why I had it off. Because this bolt is going to be really, really difficult to put in. Especially while this thing's sliding around. Nope. No, no, no. Nope, don't drop it. Don't drop it, please don't drop it. Ah, this is where it gets tricky. I might have to disconnect this wire again just to give me enough leverage to get in there and put this wire in again. Let's do something that I shouldn't be doing. Just go like that, put my one. No, 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 I'll do that. No, 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 no. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna save that one for last. There's another bolt in my pocket hands and that comes around over here there's a there's a thing there okay no ah oh, fucking dropped it I fucking dropped it fuck can I can I pick it up No, no, ah, guys, this is so fucking frustrating. All right, we'll come back for that bolt. We'll come back for that bolt. Let's get all the really small things out of my pocket. So this should be this guy goes on like that. Then one of these guys goes on like that. Okay, good. Every part I get done, I get such a feeling of relief. Like, fuck, fucking I got it done. Okay, now, okay, here we go, here we go. Go on, go on, please go on, please go on. I have to move this wire out of the way. And hopefully have enough manual dexterity to get this one going. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, one of those bolts that I dropped in here. How do I get to you? My fingers aren't even big enough. I don't even know if I have a magnet on board to get that. I think I'm gonna have to get a flathead screwdriver and just pry that thing out of there. Uh, I'm gonna tighten this down for now. There we go, okay. Okay. Uh, now, in my pocket is an eight millimeter socket. So we're gonna switch the sockets. Hopefully not drift away. Switch the sockets. Pockets. Okay, and then tighten this down. Don't have a lot of room here to maneuver.
to figure out how to get this one 10 millimeter bolt in here and then get the one that I dropped uh, and put that back in. So I'm gonna do that off camera because this is uh, not as interesting as everything else. And then we'll hook up the wires, hook this up to battery and see if this thing, see if this thing works to see if I was right about the starter and the solenoid. Okay, got that. Gotta be very careful because you don't want the socket to pop out and drop in the water. And then uh, this guy, I'm actually gonna reroute him. I'm not even holding on, I'm just standing on this thing right now. Crap. Don't fall in the water. Don't fall in the water. Okay. 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 Uh, I think I think it's ready for testing. Fingers, guys. Cross your fingers. Uh, everything's connected. We've got the battery on there. Let's crank this key. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Uh, always a chance for these things. God, I'm nervous. It's, it's cranking. It's cranking guys. That was a, uh, that was a lot of good cranking, but this engine hasn't been started in a very long time. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm back to the same old stuff. It's gonna be starter fluid, uh, carb cleaner. I probably will have to pull that carb. It's, it's been a, it's been a long time, so it might be cleaned, but let's, let's do, uh, let's do some starting fluid first. See if thing, See if this thing turns there over. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We have a running motor once again. So, starting the solenoid, that was the issue. This is great. So, the engine is running, and unfortunately, the ethanol in the gas here in California is so high that if you let the gas sit for a long time, it just, it just turns to a large percentage of water because ethanol. Uh, absorbs its own weight in water and we've had the rain so that gas has been sitting there for quite a long time and it's now unusable so the engine ran for probably about 20 minutes and then died out so in the next episode I'll be covering um, how to take care of the water issue with the now poured engine so in the meantime if you guys enjoy this episode please give this video a like and thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next episode